easy to go around the room and quickly introduce ourselves. Who we are, uh, so sir, we'll have the room. Okay, Summer in Commandment Schools and Division. Okay, Rob, who's going to Pacific Farmers Co-op? David Tarnas, uh, private agricultural consultant from YMAP. Troy K. Olinui, OK Farms, and the Ed Olson Trust. Lori Obra, Rusty Sawayan, Alcoholic. Nina Tanabi, Pacific Food Technology. Mike Robinson, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, Land Management Division. Don Mindy, uh, Research and Development. Jeff Melrose, Research and Development. Doc Kaili, Research and Development. Kang uh, Dada, Adaptations Farm and Distribution Group. Tim Richards, veterinarian and rancher. And that's their, their guest in the background. Introduce yourselves, please. Gary Marks. Uh, Derek Brewer, um, Ecological Hawaii and GMO Free Hawaii. Mike Watson, resident of Volcano and with GMO Free Hawaii. Uh, David Hurt, legislative assistant for Council Member Margaret Willie. Nancy Cook Lauer, West Hawaii today on the Hawaii Tribune Herald. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate it. Um, first thing on the agenda is discussion of our election of a chairperson. Um, this is the sec second meeting of this commission uh, with the mayor's second term. And we tabled that conversation as we had a little trouble getting everybody scheduled in at the time. So with that, uh, at the point of the conversation, I agreed to serve as vice chair for the, the group. Uh, many of us are returning faces from the previous commission. And we elected to make sure we had a full commission before we agreed to um, a chairperson. At this point, uh, <coughs> I would like to nominate <coughs> King Dada as our chair. And King, are you willing to serve? Yeah. I'll be willing to second. I have a second. Uh, any discussion from the floor? Hearing none, I will uh, entertain a closing of the. Uh, the Closing of the nomination, so I guess I move, move to close the nomination. Okay, second, second. Okay, by unanimous acclamation, we have our new chair. Thank you very much, team. Thank you, team. Thank you. I will like to continue to serve as your vice chair, but this meeting is now yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next thing on our agenda is statements from the public. There's plenty of public here, and each person is limited to three minutes. So, uh, I guess, do, how many of you would like to speak? Thank you. Okay. Is there a person down there? Okay. Let, let you go first. What's, what's your name again? My name is There is a sign-up sheet. You did sign in, yes. Okay, great. Maybe you can stand so yeah, that sure. you can see. Okay. So uh, my name is uh, Derek Brewer. I live in Hawaiian Acres. I have a 12-acre farm there. Uh, it's Eco Hostel Hawaii. I'm in the agritourism business, as well as uh, an organic farmer on the island. And so I'm looking forward to uh, you know, seeing a little bit more of uh, the county's process here, and I would like to see you know, encouragement of, of permaculture and, and uh, based uh, systems on our island. Uh, I saw a little bit on the agenda as far as the grants, as far as uh, that is a possibility to encourage that to be going on in our island. So I'd like to see a lot more you know, beneficial programs and things to help encourage and use uh, you know, co-cropping as well as um, you know, companion cropping. Compost as well, um, and many other systems that can be helpful to the farmers on this island to reduce our imports and our local sources, as well as to encourage you know <coughs> other farmers to be growing and creating uh, the fertilizers and things that we need on this island rather than growing them from uh, an outside source. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for saying it. Uh, are there any comments? Should we have any comments from the council or any questions from the council? Welcome. Thank you. Okay. No comments from the council. Then uh, who's the next person I'd like to speak? Okay. okay, my name is Blake Watson, and I'd like to just talk a little bit just for a bit about um, the Homokula Ag Cooperative. I used to be a board member of the cooperative back in 2007, and previous to that, there was a, um, a Homokula Ag plan that was developed between 2008 and 2006, where the community came together with their vision of what Homokula's Ag plan should be. And mistaken if I'm wrong, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what the county did was take some of the ideas that they came up with into what you guys are doing, but I want to find out more what you guys are all up to. Also, as a board, uh, we voted to um, have the Ag Plan be part of cooperative policy, policy, and part of that is, uh, what that means is better housing opportunities for farmers. I live in Volcano, I had to go all the way to Homakula to build my farm, and I'd like to find a way where I can live closer by 
even on the farm if that was possible. Also, I think a lot of the, the way it was set up here was to uh, make it harder for us to just work on improving the soil that had been worn out for 100 years of uh, cane development and, uh, and give us more of a stewardship approach where we have longer time before we can improve the soil before we're required to make money on the property. Um, another thing that it did is it, because the Act Plan had a precautionary approach to the GMOs, um, because of, we employed the Act Plan as part of cooperative policy, um, and none of the lands on the co-ops can now grow GMOs. Um, so that's 80 farms and 1,000 acres, and that's still their cooperative policy. So I would like to see that you guys consider that and uh, make the county development rules. If that's something that we ask for. So, thanks. Uh, thank you for your comments. I appreciate the soil building. Um, are there questions questions from the council or from the commission? Yeah, once again, I'm Dave Hurt. I'm the legislative assistant for Council Member Margaret Willie. Um, she's unable to be here, so I'm representing her. She's, uh, as a chairperson for the uh, Ag, Water, and Energy Sustainability Council Committee, very interested in working with this commission, would uh, be very interested in getting on any kind of an electronic email uh, system to get information and updates from the commission. And is. Uh, Willing and wanting to help with any of the issues that you might come across as you go forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank you for your comments. Uh, I think we have another person up here. Good day. Good morning. Uh, my name is James Weatherford. I uh, reside in Puna. I have uh, producing a bit of fruit as well as the grass here beef there. I want to address you today on uh, particularly regarding the agriculture development plan. I speak from having uh, lived on a farm since I was born and having more than 30 years of professional experience working in agriculture in four countries. Uh, I've gone over the plan carefully and did participate in, in its uh, uh, writing and with the consultants. I want to encourage you to strongly remember that the plan needs to be more about production. And I feel that it is a bit overly production oriented. We need to have a market oriented uh, agriculture sector here. I know the plan addresses promotion of what we must do is not produce something and then try to convince people to buy it just because it was produced here. The way to properly go about marketing something is find out what people want and then undertake to produce it and then make sure they're informed that it's available. And I'd be glad to, uh, to support you in any way that I can to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. So, so you're looking for um, what would be some examples of market based policy, I guess, is what you're saying? Well, well, the way uh, a private sector organization would do it is they would go about conducting market research and finding out what consumers actually want in terms of the type of products, the nature of products, the way those products are produced, and uh, basically addressing the, the what, when, where, why, and how of food. And now they're producing. All right, thank you. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Any other questions? Uh, any other um, people from the public who want to make other comments? Okay, so we just have uh, one more statement. Also, I just uh, wrapped up. I was teaching uh, business plan development for farmers in the Kuna area through the Hawaiian Community College based on an agricultural grant that was uh, donated to the school there. It's been going on for about two years now, and it's expanded to five classes throughout the island. And uh, so just have some experience in, in educating farmers on uh, the business aspect of it, which includes marketing being a, a very huge part of that. Let the Jim Russian Sure. Okay. Um, I guess the main thing that the commission can do is give advice to the mayor. The main things the county can do, because that's the level which we're working on, is um, work some with county level regulations and then work some with, um, I guess, grants or proposals that um, you know, get approved by the council. And they can also help set direction policy. So there's, there's inputs to go in all those directions. And at different times, you know, we focus with different groups. We've had people come come through and say kind of like you know what their concerns are. Like we've worked with cattle people, we've worked with you know other groups of people too to to kind of get a sense of what groups of farmers are interested in. So we'll definitely definitely appreciate coming in meetings. Definitely appreciate your your input. It's definitely it's important and it helps us you know give proper advice to the mayor. 
So thank you for thank you for coming. Thank you for your comments. Um, that's our next thing. Next thing is review and approval of the minutes. So as does anyone have any comments or want to make any changes to the minutes? I just have two quick corrections. Page three uh, under not the section I spoke of. It's actually December two. 2012 was the deadline. <coughs> so oh, I see. December 2012. Okay. I probably misspoke. So December 2012 was the deadline. And we'll hear more about that today. And then page five, I'm not sure what was referred to. Council for Agriculture, I'm not sure what that is. Um, under the first page bullet. Page two. Page five, page under two. Mayor Kanoy's comments, first bullet says supported Council for Agriculture. I'm just not sure what that is. Was he referring to Council Committee on Agriculture? No, what, uh, explain where you are again. Page five, first bullet under Mayor Kanoy. Council for Agriculture. I just didn't. I guess um, basically he was talking about the county council that okay. is in support of agriculture. We have a, a council okay. that's strong in support of agriculture. Like he was talking about. Maybe we just say county council. Or okay. County council. Okay. I just, that makes sense. But there was a new council I didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Approval. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I'll move to approve. Uh, and I'll second. Set, okay, Nina will second it, and then, then I should. <clears throat> and I have another. I yeah, although I wasn't there, I noticed that there on page seven, uh, second bullet item from the bottom, uh, funded a project through the Forest Industry Institute. That should be Hawaii Forest Institute. Page seven, excuse me, can you try that again? Funded through this last one, funded through the Hawaii? Hawaii Forest Institute. Not industry, huh? Not industry. No. All right, Hawaii Forest Institute. Okay, great. Um, do you need a motion to accept that change also? No, it's part of the discussion. It's part of the discussion, okay. Um, <coughs> is there any further discussion on these changes? Then, uh, that's all in favor of making these changes. Say aye. 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 Okay. That's all opposed. There are no opposition. And the changes are approved. Is there someone who's trying to address the coming of the youth, the Sunshine Law thing? Is that coming from? It was just whether or not there are members that needed training that hadn't gotten it before, I think was what was discussed yeah. last time. Okay. And I did send out a notification of a training. training the data that was so yeah, they're going to have another. I, <coughs> and I will find that date out and let you all know. It was a little last minute. Um, we, Margaret. Masunaga is the corporation council assigned to this commission. She is not able to attend. Uh, she's in Kona, another matter. But um, she did email out another update from the Office of Information Practices, and Don Mendy will uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. Can take one and pass it though. What, what basically this is? Just, she just wanted to inform you that um, you know, since this is the beginning of a new year, um, I know they. Uh, you know, you might have task force or groups set up to specifically work on certain projects. That there's, there is, in the Sunshine Law, there's a, what they call a permitted interaction group, or a PIG, that's, that's a group of commission members <coughs> that are less than a forum, and that actually can go on and come, um, obtain a task and then report back and maybe take some and help for, um, if the board takes an action. But what, there's, there's three steps that need to happen. The first step in public forum, it has to be the, 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 the scope has to be defined and the commission members have to be assigned. And then the second one, uh, second meeting would be a report back on progress. And then the third meeting would be to determine uh, action steps. Um, but it's important that you can have community members outside the commission taking part in this group, but not any more commission members. So it has to be less than a forum. So they can work together, and they don't have to have um, whole public meetings, although they can if they want to. But it just has to be a working meeting. And then if if the the commission group needs to change, it has to be resolved and redone in the public forum. 
So this is just another form. It's like because as it, as it is, it's right now only two commission members can talk and they're active, you know, on anything. But this one is actually a, a for if they need a, to do a task force or something like that you can actually have well, this quorum in this five, yeah. Um, five of the six. 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 Yes, so you can have five members in a task force along with any other committee, community members that's not part of the commission. But it just has to be assigned in a public forum like this. Yeah. So, so public forum, we're, uh, we're allowed up to five members, and in private, no more than two. No more than two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So if there's you know if there's a task force that or you know that needs to be formed to work on a certain project, you can go ahead and assign to five members. Um, but, and it's only those five members that can work on it. They can't talk to any other commission members unless and it's on an agenda item. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The membership has to stay the same. It cannot change for this group. Um, and if it does, then like I said, then it has to be dissolved and reformed. The, um, <clears throat> the last commission, the, the, having the two member, we're allowed the. Um, ad hoc committees where we work on something to report back to the group. So this is if we want a larger member. Yeah, yeah. Right? The two members can meet anytime and then talk about anything they want where the 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 paid group the, is up to five and they have a specific task that they're assigned at the meeting. So if they want to research some kind of topic and then so yeah. are they allowed outside conversations? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, so within that group, yeah, within that group, or not. I mean, they could have private meetings too. So if they want to grab a bunch of experts that not that are not commission members to to you know investigate or whatever, then they can they can meet separately. Uh, it, say, it says that it doesn't have to be public, although they can hold it public if they want to. Yeah. But it sounds like our ad hoc committees can be larger, yeah. basically, yeah. and then we call them pigs now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. that kind of entertainment. I, I like it. I think it's, we need humor in government. Yeah. <laughs> and do minutes need to be taken for those meetings? It's preferable, yeah. 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 Okay. Just to keep everything on record. At the public meetings. <laughs> and yeah, and then even at the end. And I think that from what Margaret Masanaga states is that um, at any time, any of you have any questions, it's best to just shoot her an email or give her a call. You know, it's better to ask than, than to just not. You know, so welcome your questions. Okay. Is there any questions on uh, some time while training? Just wait, maybe ask if anybody wants it. Okay. Does, that, does anybody want some uh, or need some time? I would go to it. Okay. I can go find out what when it's the next one. Anyone else? I would probably use a refresher since I sit on the other board. Okay. Same here. Okay. So is it okay, Don, if we just send it? Yes. Then whoever wants to get a refresher, I yes. probably will take the refresher too. What I'm going to do is see um, if uh, Margaret herself would be able to, she did say, suggest she could put it on herself. and Or if we can't get everybody on that same time, then um, we'll do it either individually or get the class that Lincoln will be um, doing again in another couple of months. But the earlier the better, I think. Is there any chance we may be able to tie it into the next, we follow the next commission meeting with maybe right after lunch or something? So That's a great idea, actually. Um, I will work on that. I believe that's a, that's a better idea. Yeah. We'll have everybody here up. Yeah. Other people can stay right. more, even more people can right, 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 right. Okay, let me work on that. I'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to mention again, take a chance to begin the meeting. When we go to general updates, I'd like to give you guys an update on the microloan work that we've been doing the last, since the last talk. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the County Agriculture Program update, the status of the Agricultural Development Plan implementation. Is there a person who wants to address that, or is there a person? Yeah, I, got a, I, have, I think in your packets there's a kind of a written summary of a variety of things, because you asked for several different kinds of updates, so I'm kind of prepared to do that for you. I'm actually providing you a handout now. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Nothing, nothing was sent out, right? No. Okay. No. 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 This was completed yesterday. Okay. Um, there are, um, I mean, there's a list of things on this that, um, you know, we've been working on related to the Ag Development Plan. Um, 
some of them, uh, you know, the website we've been working on, we still need to keep working on uh, keeping that thing updated, but we have a new website up. Um, there are multiple recommendations in the plan related to real property taxes, and I believe that conversation is going on now in the Department of Finance and with the County Council's uh, ad hoc committee. Um, so I'm sure we'll see something in that regard as those uh, uh, recommendations start to take shape to kind of revisit the overall real property tax policy. Uh, I, I have a response, more detailed one, on the uh, building permit uh, benefits, uh, the state law that tries to limit the, the requirements for building permits on ag land. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and so we continue. If there's any extras, can you pass them to the public? Maybe? Sure. There are, um, you know, the, the county IAL conversation shows up there frequently. I think is being uh, the conversation that I understand is really taking place at the planning department and probably revisiting that in the context of the general plan update that's supposed to be um, initiated, I believe, uh, if not this fiscal, next fiscal. I think they're starting some of the work now on the GP update. And, um, you know, the whole range of coordination issues between us and UH and Department of Ag, which kind of is an ongoing conversation. Uh, there is in your packet the actual breakdown of all of the individual actions. Hmm? Oh, it's here. Okay, I didn't get into the packet, sorry. Um, this is just a piece that was in the plan. And one of the things we would really welcome from this commission is um, to go through these uh, listing of uh, priority items and uh, come back with some suggestions for us as to how to implement some of the ones in specific, uh, specifically. So please, uh, maybe that can be an issue for your for a subsequent uh, conversation. You guys did ask us to take a look at the implication of the state land the state law passed last legislative session that exempted agricultural structures from building permits. And how is the county dealing with that? The county recognizes that law, accepts that law. Um, it's not as easy as that, um, I think. At some level, um, you know, the planning department is no longer in the loop on some of those people's coming in with permitting so that things like setbacks or being in the SMA or things that might otherwise kick off other kinds of permitting requirements aren't necessarily, you know, brought up. Um, so that's just a hole in the review process that's, that persists. And um, the building department, by law, if you build an agricultural building, you have a period in time in which you can register it. Uh, with, the, with the building department just to say, I built it, you, you know, so that you have it. Uh, there have been um, very few, uh, when I talked to David Yamamoto, he couldn't cite a specific in his mind, but thought there may have been folks coming in with those registrations. Um, that's just intended to let the building department know that there's a building on the property as opposed to requiring them to get a permit. But what does happen is that people are uh, periodically complaining about buildings being built in uh, in ag property either in a setback area or in some ways and so that the building permit process the enforcement process tends to be um, complaint driven um, the building department still believes that ultimately whether you need a permit or not you're supposed to build it to code and uh, and we'll make that point to people when they're confronted when they you know when they have a complaint applied um, to them. It's kind of a catch-22, right? I mean, if it's not the code and you say, okay, so it's not the code, what, don't you get a permit? I can't get your permit? Well, you don't need a permit. So it's a, there are these catches in here that if, you, if you're still requiring them and want them to do the code and you get complaints and you tell them that, you, that it doesn't meet code, the kind of question is, so it, you don't need a permit for it. But the plan, they still feel that people building in these circumstances need to have, you know, safety in mind, enough tie downs on a windy day, that kind of stuff that becomes problematic. Maui actually went forward and took a look at that particular ordinance and tried to adopt it into their overall system of building code. So they've taken a kind of how do you adopt this and kind of fit it into our territory here a little bit. Um, that might be something that this council could. could 
uh, try to do as well, just to make sure that it's a real clean statement. And uh, so when I talk to Neil Erickson, for instance, who's a you know building department inspector, you know he really struggles, and the department still struggles with how do you implement this at the local level. We're not requiring them to get permits, but there's still some residual issues that uh, so crop if you up. Register like a like a simple building, um, or whether you register or not, and it's not to code, then do you have to take it down. No, I mean I don't think that I don't I think that's kind of the catch twenty two in it, and there are several of them I can imagine. So, um, you know, on what authority do they say to take it down? You know, you don't get a permit, well, you don't need a permit. And then if it's a smaller structure, it's like someone like tool sheds, someone like goat sheds, uh, I guess the question is, what, what, how do you know which codes are applicable? Because basically the intent of it was to allow small structures. I understood basically small structures up until the point that you put a kitchen and bathroom in it. So basically small, unlivable structures seem to be the intent of the law at the state level. But um, at the county level, if you're going with codes, as soon as you have codes, you have other people who work on the, work on the farm, and all of a sudden, what compliance do you need for that? And you know, you go in that whole, that whole direction. So we have a list of structures that uh, they've said are approved and what, what they consider is important to them. Is, is there like, can you build a chicken coop? Can you build a garage? Can you, you know, that, that type of specific. You know, that kind of clarity might be a really useful clarity to have. And it might be useful for us to have, for you folks to have some of these questions with David Yamamoto and the building department, and maybe that's something that we could do in the future. Because I think there are areas of grayness in this process that make it hard for the people in the building. There are also some things about the code that allow for certain numbers of buildings to be built on property, you know, so many of such size. And the problem is that the, the, now that you don't have to go through any building process here, they become you know, secondary living facilities, and you know, you kind of lose control of some of that. Um, uh, you know, how many people live on a given piece of property, and which wasn't the intention of the state um, bill. <clears throat> so, what I confronted trying to dig around in it was I still saw a gray area, and if you talk to different levels, <clears throat> you get a little bit different um, take on the matter. So. Um, I would just something for you guys to think about, but if it is something you want to come back to and help clarify, there is uncertainty in this, and the more you understand and can vet your own questions against David or somebody else who's uh, implementing it. I think this you know, could be a good venue to have members of the public, plus the building person here, plus if it, I don't know if you need someone who's you know, involved with the state law, you know, or if you just keep it at the county level. So you can sit there and see what the intentions of the state law are, what the barriers to implementing it in as far as the uh, building permit person is concerned. Right. Because you, re you realize that they, they do come across a set of regulatory yeah. structures, so that's where you get this. Yeah, which is why everyone stays away from it. That's why you wouldn't register your building right. or tell anybody that you're doing anything if you can get away with it. Right. right. But it may be an issue um, that you want to take on further just to help resolve some of these. On this one, um, we talked about the last meeting. There was a request to different industries to ask for a list of specific structures, whatever the case may be. And I don't know if it's in the minutes, but I don't remember what the outcome of that. Did you come across that? I did not find that we had submitted a list. And there may be, there may have been submitted one, but I wasn't. I seem to recall with these people, like in October deadline mm -hmm. last year, you know, when we had sent, I think, Fraser folks send those letters out. Right. And then, I think our last commission meeting was either November. I don't think we met in December, so I don't think we as a commission had time to compile whatever the department might have received from that request for information from the different associations. Like, Eric, I don't know if you're a flower fruit. You guys might be the only one that we're getting ready to submit something to us on the list of buildings. Yeah, we're too. I don't think we those kind of I need to write off something. It would have gone to County R and D. Yeah. yeah. So it may be in I'm, your course. I'm not aware of anything that came in okay. in that period so of time. Like, if there's a group within us that wants to look into it, just to start from the beginning. Yeah. And just a clarification, Jeff, this only applies to new buildings going forward, right? It's not. I Does believe that's true. I believe that's or true. And, and how you would deal with that, how you would be able to go in and register a building that's new but it's actually older than the law, 
Yeah. Could you do that, for instance? Um, I don't know. And, and that's the kind of question I think you have to, we have you, to pose. Do you know if the department is looking for help with the clarification? Like if our, if we had an ad hoc group that went to them and tried to investigate all these questions, if the department would be willing to come up with some kind of internal memo on clarifying it for the staff level, or are they don't seem interested. I know because we don't want to spin our wheels. No, you're right. Uh, I know that they have assigned the responsibility to somebody who's an inspector in the department to try and put some thoughts together. Okay. You know, and it probably tends to fall to the person who's the most squeaky on that topic and frustrated by what they're seeing or the inspections that they do. Um, but I think sometimes that, you know, getting back to your level of kind of distant, better clarity on the overall picture of this might be helpful for the department and all I could do is ask David Yamamoto if he would be willing to come and have a conversation, explain his concerns maybe, and, and add in. Um, because I think the intent of the law was, it, it was, was right and useful, um, but you know that there are both active abuses and then regulatory overlaps that don't kind of make a lot of sense, mm -hmm. I think. Just a, okay, a clarification. So if we're going to, the most thing from the, at the county level, is that pretty much a policy decision by the mayor and then uh, planning director's discussion, the building inspector's discussion? I mean, if, it's, if, it, if that's the place, then that's people we should talk to. If it's something that we need to say, ask the mayor to make a larger policy statement or go to the council to ask them for, you know, you know more clarity from the, from the council. So I'm kind of asking right now with implementation, it, from what I'm hearing you say, it sounds like there's a lot of discussion on the part of the uh, uh, the building inspector and the planning department right now that work to, uh, to decide what's allowed and what's not. Well, I would say the planning department not so much because they actually don't even see them anymore. Well, they have pretty so they've been shortcutted out. They, they've, they've been kind of sh uh, short circuited out of the picture and would like to be in just for the sake of being able to know whether or not it's in the setback or not, and that that then creates neighborhood issues and the like. And I think in the in that other in the other conversation. Um, I think we need to kind of dig into that a little bit to know whether there is reason for, you know, council clarification because it may be that you need to adjust some of the rules that tend to run back and forth across each other. It could get more complicated than you want and there are also discretionary calls, but there are also rules that are being followed that inspectors are supposed to follow. So at what point do you... Right, where's, where's the decision made? Yeah, where's the decision made? And I think that that's an evolving conversation, so I would say... Um, from my digging on it, I think it makes sense for us to have a, um, an opportunity for you guys to ask the question of the people who are actually in the middle of doing this. And um, you could decide from that conversation what traction you thought you could get on the conversation. Um, wait, is it appropriate to, uh, you know, for Marissa to just put a proposal to create a well, I'd like to not, take, not Jeff well, Jeff offered to bring someone he, to our commission from the building department to first, I think, explain to us, and then I think those of us in the group that are interested in pursuing it further based on what's explained, then we would do that. Okay, do it in that one. Okay. The, the whole intent was to streamline for agriculture. Yes. And because um, I remember I got a call last year about whether or not I thought a building permit for putting up a water tank was important. And, and so I, I think, um, and I agree with you, what Simmer said, if we, um, and it's probably, we were trying to put the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken last year because we're trying to stumble. Now at this point, if we have a, a conversation, and then we can better go back to our industry groups and say, okay, we have a better understanding. Give us a list of what you think would be a good way to get this done. And then we can compile those and then sort of give it to the appropriate authority. So the inspector can come out and say, okay, they're building a new residential, but Okay, I see this, that's fine, it's acceptable under AG, whatever the case may be. Right. And if you need to make that a firmer policy as opposed to a practice policy, and you, and you need, in terms of finding a way to put it into code, you know, you could do that as well. So, but those those you'd know later on after you've had the conversation. Right. David, do you have any thoughts on this? You, you were pretty... You know, yeah, this is a tough uh, law to implement, and so I think we need to do whatever we can to help. Uh, but. Uh, would appreciate hearing first from the uh, building division and then we can respond to their request because they're the lead obviously and we want to be supportive of it. Mm -hmm. um, but working out the details is going to be a challenge. Yeah, so, okay. That's what I found when I started to dig yeah. into it so I'll just bring that. And, and planning department <coughs> certainly wants to make sure that the setbacks are 
clearly identified to the applicant. And so how that happens is an administrative question that should be figured out. I don't have an answer particularly because they know the process that they need to fit within. So that's a question really to the building division, I would guess. And I think one other, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that, that another thing is this was statewide law, it isn't just us. So yes. Maui figured out a way to kind of address this for themselves. I need to kind of be a little more about what that looked like, what's Kauai doing, and that way we don't have to necessarily recreate the wheel. Yes. Yeah, I, you know, I, <clears throat> the whole thing about uh, building codes is safety and health, right? And we may need to kind of control liability at the same time we're evaluating what's, what's, what's a safe building for farming versus residential. So do we need some sort of legal presence to help us through that thought process while we're in front of building code inspectors? That would be part B. I think first got to hear from the building code, so they say, let me have the top story from that. The whole intent is to make it easier on ag. That's the intent. So I figured out to make that for and I'm not sure liability follows if we're not permitting. There's, I mean, I don't know what the county, if the county has any liability in their circumstance where we're not issuing permits. That's a, you know, kind of a buyer and well, what, builder what, beware. What made me think like that was the idea of a water tank. You know, <clears throat> if I'm building a 10,000 gallon water tank in the middle of 500 acres, no big deal. If I'm building a 200,000 gallon water tank right above somebody's house on a steep hill, might be a different situation because the tank fails, somebody's at risk. So, so I, that's where I think having maybe the presence of somebody that can immediately say, <clears throat> this is a potential liability if we exclude this, therefore we have to do something else to allow that to happen, thereby having a limited liability in this situation. And that, and that current, that, that is, a simultaneous it dialogue. It is a kind of, but I, I would say that um, my take would be like yours, that this is a plan B conversation that's first, you know, let's not make it too complicated. The sooner you get lawyers in the room, the harder it is to have any particular uh, clarity and dialogue. <laughs> uh, I think what you first got to do is figure out what's the big picture and then kind of work through the, the areas of that's liability and subsequent. But you have a point, Mike, because what one thing if you fight egg versus in the backyard of a sub subdivision that someone wants to put it, you have a point. So I, that's kind of I asked that specific question of David about water tanks because I knew it was an issue for some of the larger ranchers, and I think, um, you know, it, it got to scale. I mean, how big? Because obviously, he said something like 5,000 gallons. I said, that's a doughboy. Yeah. Come on now. You know, everybody's got a doughboy. So, um, anyway, I think it will be a useful conversation. Let me see if I can find. A, a way to get David to participate I'll at our next meeting, if that's, if you can put that on the agenda. You know, I, I agree with pursuing with getting the, the planning department involved, but building the back department. of our, or, yeah, building department, but in the back of our minds, I think we also need to remember, it's a statewide law that may include egg parks, which is state land, right? So that, it, it's really, really a complicated issue, because who's going to be held with the liability factor in the event something happens? Right. So, but that's, I think, that's plan B that we need to look at, but we need to keep that in the back of our minds. That's, that's good. You know, the recommendation that we do try to advise the mayor with their liabilities that may come with the territory. Well, let's figure out, let's get a little bit more information on the table and try to do that at the next meeting. That'll be a useful conversation. Yeah, I think after we're out, if it's Jeff's presentation, we should come back and decide what to do with the call meeting, you know, what the point calls the meeting. Cool. Why don't you cool. Uh, the next item you wanted an update was the Kapalena uh, property. That uh, basically there is a, a short-term agreement on the property with the Hawaii Farms, Hawaii Farm Bureau, Hawaii Island Farm Bureau, and they're using about 300 acres of that uh, that's been fenced, the lower end of the property, and it's being fenced and uh, a place for cow calls and bulls to be brought in to stabilize it before they go to the slaughterhouse because a lot of folks are taking them off their drying lands and needing a place to kind of put something back on them before they go into the... And that was also before they get into the slaughterhouse, but it was also a way to um, um, get the lands down, get them visible. So that process is happening. The land is, is opened up quite a bit. Um, 
there has been a, uh, a small grant to the Farm Bureau to run a water line from the Boy Scout camp or up on, off the Malta Highway into an area on the upper portion of this property that is fairly clear. The property's got some clarity down low along the Kukui Highly area. In the middle, it's almost entirely overgrown with ironwood. And then in the upper area, there is some open pasture that's useful. And we're trying to kind of get it at it from two angles because the ironwood, the overgrowth since the shutdown of the sugar company has been pretty extensive. So, um, Right now, we're kind of struggling with the fact that the Hawaii Island Farm Bureau doesn't really exist as an entity anymore. It went through some change. And so we're just at the, at the very end of having the Hamakua Farm Bureau have all of its papers together to be able to pick up that responsibility. These are still on short-term agreements. Um, and I think it's a you know coming in the near term to kind of revisiting what the trajectory of this particular property is. It's, it's really pasture land. It's not. I don't think you're going to see a lot of diversified agriculture up there. It's above the ditch. It doesn't have. It's kind of rugged land, um, and uh, going to take a whole lot of clearing unless you can find a commercial way to get rid of the ironwood, which was uh, farm bureau guys were looking for. Jason, one of these folks. Um, but until big trees start to move off the Humacoa coast in a big way, that's not going to happen. Just as an isolated thing. So it's. Um, it is something that we need to kind of revisit. Um, just also, finance has leased off most of the Powilo properties, which are just above between Powilo Town and that uh, the new bridge that just got completed last year. Up Malka, there's about nine or ten parcels. And for the most part, those are all leased through open bid. And most of them went to ranching. Most of them went to Lao Ranch. And I think three of them have some kind of farming activity on them or are headed in that direction. These agreements have just been kind of finalized and approved by council. So that's, uh, I think this is somebody wants to grow cocoa and there's a little coffee and some pasture and coffee and fairly small return on those properties. The bulk of them are, um, are pasture. What's the length of those leases in the, in the OEO? That's a good question. I don't have the answer to that. I, I, my thought was, um, I would have said 10 to 20 years, but I, let, me, let me check with uh, Ken Van Bergen, because I don't think you the wrong answer. Uh, but they are, um, I think they, they are leases of term. So there is a um, reason for people to go up and invest, whether it's in fencing or planting or the like. So I don't think anybody's going to plant a cocoa crop on, <coughs> on a short term. Um, slaughterhouse improvements are moving along. Um, there are three major pieces of that. The rendering plant is, uh, the, the building's been prepped and ready to go. Equipment shows up in January, probably completed by March. And I think then there's some um, related permitting and operational stuff. Dave Deleuze thinks probably it's up and operating in September. And uh, we're starting to talk about how to make sure, refine what the outcome of that rendering plan and what are the different kinds of uses that it could be used for. Um, and uh, he's looking for actually a partner to help manage or operate that. We look at Pacific Biodiesel and a couple of others. They actually have a uh, rendering plant in Seattle somewhere, I guess, the biodiesel camp about um, team. But that's a that's early conversation. There is a age, a chilling facility to age meat inside that's going to take a portion of the packing floor that they pack uh, primal and box uh, meat. So, and that'll add value to the flow through because of H meat is softer and can be more um, marketable. So that's gonna happen in January. They just have to work around the processing schedule. So it's just construction wise, that's a tricky one. And uh, yeah, question on the slaughterhouse and maybe Tim, you can chime in on this. Um, is this going to increase our slaughterhouse capability extensively on the island? Is that going to increase? Well, yes, um, because one of the bottlenecks is cold storage. And so you can only slaughter as many animals and you have places to store them. So you can't do that. So I haven't seen the exact plans of this, but if we expand our chill space, then yes, that will increase because the, the kill floor is not being fully utilized, the, the total number of units going through it. So you need more chill space and then more processing. I mean, the whole direction of the cattle industry is more local uh, 
finishing, processing, value adding, so we keep all those dollars here and, and we do it all here. I mean, that's the direction. That, that's, 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 that's the direction. But yes, yeah, so that's sort of the first increment to do that. So my answer to that would be yes, but I haven't seen the exact configuration. And I think there are a couple of other considerations. One is the management of waste water needed to be cleaned up and fixed up. Right. So partly it stabilizes the operation for a period of time. The rendering plant, I think they have a permit to bury on site, um, but that's not something DOH is going to continue for a long period of time. So if it's not there, it'll end up at the landfill. Right. And so um, the intention is to make use of it rather than bury it or to... Um, so these are, remember this is a state-owned facility leased to beef, what's it called, producers. beef producers, and um, with the Duluth family as the primary, and the money was sent to, given to the county to help implement the work. Right. So the fact that it's happening at all today is because the mayor said, you know, we'll take it, let's go get it, let's just solve that problem, and public works, and um, the Inaba engineering has been kind of working on the pieces of that. Um, they are, there is also a wastewater function, which is almost complete. They have ponds and line ponds and piping and that sort of thing, but that's going to be short. Again, the reason I bring that up, too, is um, we have a lot of small farmers that are, you know, one, two cows kind of guys uh, that really don't have uh, the capability to process their animals reliable, reliably. And we had a discussion about portable slaughterhouses and, and spreading that impact instead of creating huge infrastructure in one area, which is good for large producers, but the smaller producers can accommodate, I think, maybe on their ranch or in a more regional concept. Uh, but you had mentioned one time that the cattle industry had done a, uh, an impact study or an analysis on yeah. portable house slaughterhouses and it, it didn't seem to work. Actually, um, I don't want to handle this chair. This is a different <coughs> Do you want to finish with this? Yeah. We'll back to this conversation later. Okay. Yeah, okay. So add it to the agenda later. Yeah, I just uh, under to... general under the general updates when you come back. I just I don't want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's not a bad conversation. I think all this is kind of in yeah, this is all. You can choose important. that. That's up to you guys how you want to do it. It is how you want to do it, chair. Okay. No, I think I think we should keep moving on. And bring it back in general updates. Okay, okay. we're just doing updates now. That's fine. Add a small question on it. Yeah. Which. Uh, is there any conversation towards turning it, any of that towards fertilizer right now? Well, I think that partly that the challenge is yes, how do you do that? And I think the actual, that's what Dave and I were, talk, were talking about, is how do you turn that in and what is, so I think there's a conversation to be had in the next couple of months to figure out who would use it. I mean, and drying it is part of the issue, you know, and, and bringing in the heat or energy of some sort that would dry it, and that's where he's looking for a, um, an operator who could do that um, because it does produce tallow, it does produce an oil, it does produce something that could be burned, that could be processed into a biofuels uh, as part of its mix. Mm -hmm. And then the question is the bone and the blood, and what, how do you do that? Right. So um, to be continued, but the conversation. Okay. Right here. Absolutely, I think it's every source of fertilizer we can find is part of what we need to be paying attention to. So it comes back to one of the gentlemen who made the comment yeah. about looking for a I mean, this little point, don't import. We have stuff here that we can do something with. Yeah. You just have to figure out what and how to plug it in with way. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, uh, the, uh, so soil and water conservation, you asked to update on that. Uh, we do continue to provide financial support to the SWCDs so that they can do farm plans and uh, help farmers work around the grading permit, basically, fundamentally. Um, and so that the, uh, they don't have to get grading permits every time they turn the soil. Um, but we do give $300,000 to the Soil and Water Conservation District, of which each soil district gets 500, and they can they use that to support it. Oh, actually, yeah. $50,000. They'd like to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So they each are able to hire a, a planner to help with that. That's what that's for. Cool. Yeah. So, is there any back, any mechanism for uh, uh, figuring out whether that's productive or, you know, I mean, are you, you have a way to monitor the effectiveness of that because part of it was about communication, part of it was about doing the plan themselves? I don't know, but I know if you reduce the amount of money, you hear a lot about it. I guess that, that's what's happened in the last year, I think. Um, they provide reporting on what's being done. Yeah, good, yeah. good. How many farmers they contact yeah, and talk yeah. to and 
Yeah. Each district usually makes a proposal for the year and how many plans they're going to complete for the year and how many practices they'll help to, I guess, implement and an education component to it too. And then they report, like John said, back on how they're achieving those goals. Not important. Possible she's seen that occasionally? Yeah, yeah, sure. Cool. Um, we do an annual fund, um, we fund the student supplemental funding uh, program. What goes out in April or March? When is it? When do we start that? Uh, the advertising for yes. that usually is about January or February okay. for the right. RFP. Right. Yes. right. And we're done by? And then awards are um, usually granted in June. June. <coughs> oh, yeah, because for the next year. So, um, but anyway, we had about 200 and Sixteen thousand uh, dollars through the ag program. There's a tourism program and a business program, but um, um, but six of those went to help um, industry groups do the work that they thought was important to do. So they make a proposal to us. These aren't things that we're creating. These are uh, community initiated, industry initiated um, projects. So the orchid society, the export nursery association, the um, Association of Nurserymen, uh, fruit, tropical fruit growers, tropical flower council, papaya industry, all of them came in with different proposals, some of them marketing, some of them help with my conference, some of them doing events of certain kinds of things. And uh, so these are generally under about $25,000 um, and they are, we've been doing it for quite some years but they become part of how the county stays associated and builds uh, the industry groups and keeps the industry groups functioning, which is, a, I think, an important function. Um, there are a number of farmer education programs. We get proposals um, from different groups. Uh, there is, the Kohala Center has one in, uh, that does farming in Haina. They have a 12 session, uh, and they have an operating farm that they work with. We give them a small amount they match it with a bunch of EDA money and other things. The uh, Waimea Homesteaders Association and Wow Farms has been working, again, we're a small piece of that overall program, but they're working to build uh, greenhouses on homesteads in Waimea and training folks to, to produce everything from potatoes to flowers to, I mean, not potatoes, but the tomatoes. Uh, uh, under the tutelage of Mike uh, Hodson, a very interesting um, Go get them program helping homesteaders to be more productive. Hilo Hamakua Community Development Corp is just a small uh, community based organization and they run what you've seen in the paper recently, the Practical Ag for Hamakua, which is a really excellent outreach to that community in different kinds of crops and issues. Um, they get about 80 to 90 people a night when they go to these things. It's very well uh, attended. And it really feeds the desire of that community to learn more about what they're, what's going on in those communities. They have farm tours. They share what's going on with each other. And um, this is the third or fourth. It's a very uh, inexpensive program, but an excellent one. And then we're funding the Ho'ulu Lahui, which is the nonprofit over the Kua Okala School, working at natural farming in the Kalapana community. And they're working just with a group of of uh, farmers and um, property owners, mainly Hawaiian families in Kalapana, to take down and build uh, the natural farming uh, skills in that particular community. Um, we have an outreach that we actually went out and chased this year to get West Hawaii, uh, to get the ant lab, the little red fire ant, ant lab, to get out to West Hawaii. And so they will be within a you know, couple, within probably the beginning of the year, series of outreaches, also some purchases of media to help educate about the ants and, uh, you know, just send some very specific kinds of information out. Ants pretty well embedded in this side of the island, but West Hawaii is still, um, can, can keep it at bay a bit. There's also another project on the ants that have to do with uh, Richardson Beach Park and the zoo trying to manage those and learn how to use this technology close to water, um, which is trying to get the permits available to, you know, to do it under certain circumstances, but realizing that this was Hawaii Tourism Authority money that actually came to the county and the Parks Department um, 
because they realize those ants come out of coconut trees on the windy on windy days and bite people flying underneath them. So it, it's uh, and then we do a little bit of research funding tends to come from the university sometimes. Um, the two we did this year had to do with a virus resistant sweet potato and a, a continuation of a conversation about oyster seed, which is a small, um, you know, just a small fry for oysters at the UH, to, um, which is a, a growing business. We can produce them actively um, and uh, they get shipped off to other places to be grown out, but it is part of the university's program. There's a Christmas tree program up at, uh, in Humaula with the Forest Industry Association. We do have a body of research that comes over time. I mean, every year we end up with little pieces of paper. I got a good one the other day on olives, for instance, that um, just looks at the olive plantings in Lalamilo and what did they learn after a couple of years of olive cycling. There's one on avocados at different elevations that that report hasn't come in yet. So there's a series of them and that I'm not quite sure what we should be doing with them. They're all, they all have their own external sources to go out to different uh, groups but um, it might be something we could collect up more actively and share. And, and um, virus resistant sweet potatoes, is that using traditional breeding or is that using GMO? No, it has to do with bringing in a variety. They <coughs> talked about bringing, there, there are virus resistant strains in Louisiana, I think, and there, the, the concern is that, well, there are lots of issues in the sweet potato business, but this one is, is can you, bring in a fresh variety or fresh cuttings of certain varieties that don't maybe don't have that virus and will some of the purples get a little mottled. Right. Yeah. And um, that was one touch. They've just finished another one having to do with handling, post market handling and um, some they did a good gathering here recently trying to, to instruct uh, growers on handling of sweet potato after you take it out of the field so that you let it dry before you wash it so it doesn't uh, you know the it doesn't get infected inside the cuts inside the fruit so it kind of you know frames up a little bit. Yeah, firms up. Um, so there's a fair amount of work being done in the sweet potato conversation. Uh, so ag specialist uh, Donna this just a they didn't hire the first time around, so that there will uh, there is an open recruitment coming up again. They're going to try again at that process. Yeah, um, there's not really much to to update on. We're working with HR uh, on the posting. Uh, it should be coming up shortly. It's going to be an open posting. We did release at the beginning of this week uh, RFP for uh, value added processing, which. Um, came from initially $60,000 that the state brought to the county. They were going to lose that money at the end of the last fiscal year. They brought it to us and said, would you guys use this? And we went back and forth on how to use it and what we could actually do with it. And finally got a RFP out um, this week, response and back in December. It's really just for planning, permitting, planning, permitting, design, marketing. marketing. So. But I really think what this will do for us is that there's lots of conversation about value added. But I think this will give us a much better sense of what people are really looking for. As I went around the island talking about it, I kept getting the sense that there were people doing stuff. Question, what do they need? The state kept wanting us to do some kind of a master design for the perfect facility. And frankly, I wanted to start much closer to where people are. Um, I'm sure people would love to buy equipment with this money, but we county money isn't going to do that. So um, so we'll see. I mean, I've had calls from tea guys and coffee guys and different folks since then trying to clarify what uh, they could do, and who, what, how the money could get used. So stay tuned. I've asked Nina to sit on a, on a selection committee with us using her food processing background and have a small collection of folks to kind of review applications. Um, so those would be $25,000 max. And maybe we can serve three or more, depending on what people are actually asking for. Um, just quick on updates. Uh, state, you, you got Russell since resigned. Not clear what's going to take place with that, but we lost one of our local guys in the upper. And maybe gain a farmer. Huh? And maybe gain a farmer. 
Yeah, it could be. Well, he had—he was kind of a farmer at one. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. He, he, Russell will become the farmer. Right. Got it. Yeah. No question. Um, and I don't know whether uh, that will step up um, Scott and rather not. I think Scott doesn't envy the idea of putting on the Kevlar vest. And he likes being kind of independent and floating. He's very useful that way. Um, he did announce that the well, Scott did announce that the. Hamakua, that the uh, Cattlemen's Association, that the Hamakua Ditch water was going to reduce in cost uh, to 20 cents a thousand from 55, I think, for the entire system. That's comparable to the rate that the stock guys pay today, and it was really intended to try and encourage use of that water, particularly to irrigate in the areas around the slaughterhouse where you've got good grass. And yet, if you had consistent water, you could get a, a more stable finishing capacity on those fields. And um, so we'll see how that, that works. It's, uh, uh, but it was something that the cattlemen and others have been pushing for for a long time. And I think it's, it'll also help regular ag, because in those areas, I'm only going to be paying 20 cents a pound. So, um, I went to the Kohala Organic Conference. Uh, Thing. Maybe you could just update folks a little bit on that. That was an excellent uh, effort that the Koala Center did, I thought, in terms of. Um, yeah, they brought together probably 100 people, 150, something yeah. like that. And it was really based on uh, presenting plans that they had done industry analysis before. And they broke the industry analysis up into like tables. And then lots of different groups of people, you know, kind of rotated tables. So they all talked about whichever issue they wanted to and put that on the big board. But for us, you know, as organic growers and as as small growers, we were making more uh, lateral connections with people. Just people brought together, so we were talking with down to earth some more old foods, we worked with them already, and kind of getting a cross mix of ideas. You're not just kind of stuck in just your pure business relationship, but also uh, looking at, at modern issues. So it was a, it was a, it was a, I thought it was a, I it was a good meeting. It brought together a lot of people. I'm not quite sure where it's going to go from there or what the next, if there's a next step needed, but I do think it's good to bring. You know, having, having Russell there, having state people, having county people there, having buyers there, having growers there, having fertilizer people there all at the same time, it's basically kind of fun. You know, it's these friends I haven't seen in, in the other islands for like, you know, five years or so, and it's just good to catch up with what's going on. So, um, if, you know, if there's an opportunity for us to support, support for Hollis and continuing it, I think, it's a, I think it's a good thing to support. I don't know if there's any proposals on the table for that. I think they did get a grant from USDA, kind of a specialty products grant that they used to fund that initiative. And they brought together uh, an advisory group that helped to sort out their action agendas. So they did have a set of action agendas, and I'm kind of hoping to see a report that comes from that. And I think at the end of the meeting, you had more conversation about you know, how do you keep focusing. But part of the issues are everything from certification, the role of certification, um, and um, some question, some conversation about number counting. It's really hard to know what the organic industries produces because there's not a lot of metrics that come, up, come with the, the particularly smaller scale farmers. Um, a lot of that sale doesn't necessarily hit the marketplace in the same sense that uh, a larger commercial grower might. So um, just how do you get that kind of numbers credibility? Um, I'll just pass that we're aware that the GMO bill passed and the mayor's certainly taking Lots of uh, uh, getting lots of uh, input on that, and I think he has to get uh, ten. The ten. What do you need on business days? Business days is what uh, Kevin just told me. So he has till the sixth, I think, of uh, December. Yeah. And just one last issue. Um, Senator Rutterman had a resolution in the last um, session to try to get the university to extend services into the Puna area, particularly in the ag group. So I've been to a couple of those meetings. One was last night. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, and Bruce Matthews, who's head of the ag commission, ag school, uh, ran it. And they're kind of jointly writing a report back to the legislature. But they're trying to get some positions that the university would fill that would help um, focus attention particularly on smaller scale ag the kind of ag some of our visitors were talking about that seemed to be the voice that was that was pushing this uh, sustainability ag uh, 
and trying to get that into the Pune community, which is kind of a hotbed for that kind of agriculture. Um, and I think one of the things that's really clear to me watching it was that that community has, you could bring a bunch of academics into that room and start to teach them about, you know, go into that and say, okay, let's talk. You know, let's start talking academically about the sustainable ag in Pune. And you have a lot of practitioners who are already doing it. And it might be a useful thing for that community just to do what Hamku is doing or some of these other places is just to start these opportunities to teach each other because there's a lot of kind of original thinking and original action going on in that community that could be very helpful for others. And I think a lot of times farmers learn more about that stuff looking over a shoulder than they do sitting in a chair being taught about it. So, um, but anyway, so long, long winded, but I thought that was a useful update. I've very been helpful. gone for a long thing, time. Yeah, one thing that I did that definitely catches us a lot that looks like we're working you know, in a lot of different directions and there's a lot of non-controversial areas that the people put in, put in, and then there's controversial areas that I think should be done, should be done with, too. Uh, from this... I just want to really thank Jeff for putting it together, because yeah. I think at our commission in the past, we struggled a little bit with keeping up with what the department is working on, so it's really nice to see it on paper, so thank you. Thanks. Yeah, very helpful. <laughs> Can I make one request? You know when you're talking about the, um, the studies that the university did and they they report back, they give your report. They have to, in order to get their final that. payment, they have to. <laughs> Could you give us a list of what's available? That's a good thing. I, I'm, I'm willing to I do that. Really I've been kind of wondering about that because I, I run into them. I have to go back to files to see them, but there are, uh, I don't know if we've ever put them in a book, but it's like we should. Just you know? a list, I mean, I guess would yeah. be helpful. Yeah. Um, yes, definitely. I've been a little frustrated sometimes because they don't always come back on time. You know, I'm, I'm processing no-cost extensions, which are not, which are kind of a complicated. It takes as many signatures to get a no-cost extension here as it does to get an original contract done. So it's um, and the university doesn't always hold to their time frames. I mean, there's always something that happens. It's like grr. But, yeah. Just as an encouragement, I think these studies are very helpful, and they'd be even more helpful if they were available to producers, uh, who then can look at them and see uh, they can learn something to determine what they want to grow. So if there's yeah. a way we can no make question. them available. I think. I think they all should be on, online, and that should be part of what it is. So when I was, this is my first round of these these yeah. contracts, and starting to see the final reports come in, and realize there is some use and value to them, um, but they, uh, they really do need to kind of be pulled out and put in uh, put in a file and also posted on the web so that they're very serious of that kind of research. Yes. Everything we pay for, everybody should be able to see. Yes, thank no you. Problem. I agree. Okay. Thank, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, from from uh, Jeff's presentation, I think there's two things that I'd like to uh, see if we want to do a little bit of work on. One is if we want to try and set up a meeting for with the building division director and make that a public meeting too and see if there's interest in doing that and, and I guess entertain a proposal to 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 create that meeting. Well I'd like to propose or move that we have the building division representatives at our next meeting and have it on our agenda so that we can get an update on implementation of that law and request if there's something we can do to assist. Is there a um, second? Second. Okay. Any, any further discussion on that? On that idea? Okay. That's uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll see. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go make the effort. I mean, it's absolutely. I, I think it's the right thing to do. It's a great right. thing to do. Yeah. This would be a good group for him to talk to as well. Okay. And shouldn't we put on the agenda once we have that? Because there has to be on the agenda the conversation about the possibility of forming a either ad hoc or <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um, should we be discussing that under item ten? <clears throat> okay. I guess we. Can... Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, this is another thing I think that may or may not be of value is to see if, since the GMO goes before the uh, air right now, whether we want to do. Um, without a lot of discussion, but just do a, a commission vote on what we think uh, 
I mean, I'll get you there. You know, when you write to split vote to split vote, I think it'd be, that's, that could just be possibly good input because you represent a lot of that. We can't do it at today's meeting because it's not been on the agenda. Okay. And by next meeting, it's going to be late. Okay. So, uh, is there any other discussion that we could have that the uh, commission can put on? I guess we can't get it to the next uh, meeting put on. Okay. Um, I think the next item on the agenda is discussion of uh, commission committee structure. Do we have someone who's addressing that? I think you first of all. Great. Chair, I, I would just uh, move to create uh, the legislative committee uh, that I would be willing to serve as chair with the purpose of providing a status report on all agriculture related bills at the legislature and uh, keep that up to date as we move through session. Okay. Um, can we hear a second to that? Second. Okay. Any, uh, any further discussion or any discussion on it? No, I just think David did a great job in the past and I know he'll do a great job in the future. I appreciate him volunteering and leading. Sure. Okay. Um, <coughs> I guess all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Chair, concerning the discussion for committee structure, I think I put that on the agenda um, as so we, we're clear where, what direction we're headed and uh, as um, I'm sure trying to start out with uh, laying out exactly what everybody's going to do. The mayor has committed to showing up to every other meeting of our commission meeting. That may be asking a little bit too much of his time. I think maybe if we go quarterly at the most because his time is precious. And so and I think we need to be quarterly, very prepared to give him advice on whatever direction we're going. And so when I, I think when we put this in as far as the structure, uh, I can't remember, so I'll be commissioners, if we talked about having sort of a vision mission-ish for the commission to make sure that we had an idea that um, the direction we're going because we are advisory to the mayor and specifically to the mayor. And he was very pointed at our um, swearing in that uh, he wants to hear from us and he, he, that's why he made the commitment of showing up every other meeting or I think every quarter would be probably uh, more beneficial for him. Uh, but anyway, just have that structure so we know what we're doing every quarter and what are our, the details of what we're trying to get done. Okay. Um, any further discussion on that? Or? Well, we, we sort of, the comment about a mission vision thing. Um, I'm, I'm not going, sure that's the right verbiage, but. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, we have pretty good direction from the resolution 26909 to form this group. Maybe we need to modify that a little bit or revisit that so we can focus since we've been sort of on leave for the last six right. months. Right. And I think that might be helpful. Uh, right. So are you suggesting we do that for the next meeting or, or I, today? No, I, I just, to make sure that, because, um, you know, we have about three quarters returning, and a quarter are new, just so we have a talk story. To me, this is a really good group, yeah. and very diversified, very, uh, I think we talk story pretty well as far as getting some things done. And so just make sure we're real clean for the chair, so uh, returning members, uh, we continue on, and new members understand where we kind of came, because when we, we're established, this is brand new, and we sort of had to pick our own direction. And I think we picked a pretty good direction, but just to kind of remind us we're more efficient with our kind of yeah. final thoughts. Yeah, I think that uh, in the committees is where we can focus on an issue. And then I think when uh, we're kind of done with a little bit of committee work, then we can bring it out for a public for a proposal to present to the mayor. Because that way you can kind of hash out the ideas and kind of get them into you know, a cohesive form. Uh, and I think that we can keep on adding committees as uh, we have people, as well, as long as we have two commissioners interested in working on it, and I think it's worthwhile to, to give them a venue to work on uh, in the method. So maybe an easy start would be to make sure we all have a copy of that resolution. I don't know if the new commissioners were provided that, uh, or if any of us can still find it. Uh, which just transfer it because I brought the old book. <laughs> <laughs> which, still which resolution is that? What? It's uh, resolution 26909, draft two. That's the one that created the commission. That's, that's the correct. Yeah, yeah, from the from the uh, county council. And and again, that's that's good direction. We can you know help focus on. Do we have yeah, a list of what committees we used to have? Whether they're no longer 
I think we start 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 fresh. Yeah, fresh. Yeah, we start fresh. I know. I believe we have legislative committee, and uh, that's what we have right now. Mm -hmm. And then there are some rules and regs in your file in terms of how that actually implements, but that, that identifies purpose and that kind of stuff that you want to be building on as well as the resolution. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. 917 2013. Thanks for that. Chair, this representative has a good idea that maybe you best not to send that out to everybody just so we have that very clean and precise. Yeah. The resolution. Um, and I wanna, would like a clarification. My understanding is that we informed the Mayor's uh, Ad Commission that it actually wasn't the same as the County Council was done in response to, but not under the direction of the County Council. I think when we had our, one of the first meetings that there's, that there's some discussion about that. I'm not sure the functional difference of that, but it meant that we're reporting to the Mayor directly. We're not reporting to the, to the County Council, so there's a different layer of independence in there. Right. Because we're an advisory. That's correct. Just to maybe add one other thought to it, and that there is, a, we talked about the ag plan. Um, there are pieces of that ag plan that can't help to set some priorities. Some of that ag plan is really about spending a whole lot more money than the county has for these kinds of things. Um, but I think that the underlying thoughts in them may have, well, there are maybe areas for traction. So I would just encourage um, perhaps uh, a, a revisiting of the handout that Dot passed out that is the summary of the action issues in the plan so that um, gives us some feedback in terms of what are the things that well, we you think we could be doing that maybe we aren't or we need to explore more or explain to you what we are doing about them. So it might be a point of your own, you know, grounding again in the conversation. That's an yes, excellent that's suggestion. That's right. um, uh, when, I, when I look at this, though, I notice there's nothing in the accomplishments list. Yeah. But we've already well, we just heard, copied this off. We've heard piece. some reports today yeah. that obviously we have accomplished a lot, so maybe helping fill that in can help us direct to things that haven't been accomplished or partially accomplished. That was actually taken off of what was on the um, online on the AG website. And I pulled it off the AG plan just so that you guys could have some meat and be able to see it instead of having to go backwards and try to find it. Um, so it was really more of a hand on weekend. But you pull it up after I made my little summary, so I was like, I, I, otherwise I could have used that as a format, perhaps. Because I know, Jeff, we, we prioritized all these things because we knew we could do them all at once and they were too expensive or whatever, so that, that would help us get back on our list. What's, what's the second tier, perhaps? I can, I can take a crack at that, um, looking at it that way, but I'd encourage you folks to kind of revisit it yourselves and, you know, if there are new ideas and new things in it that you think you could, maybe we should be paying attention or have conversation on at this point would be helpful. Maybe we can, uh, when we work on the next agenda, we can get that on our next agenda for us to review it and you know, come back with it. Uh, under general updates, I'd like to do is just, you know, go on and read any of the commission members if you have any updates since the next meeting, any, anything that they want to add in that they've been working on. And, you know, in the short term, in the short, <laughs> short time span, I just kind of to, to see what's, you know, what updates there are. Else. Is this uh, where we can quickly discuss the portable slaughterhouse thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, is that a viable opportunity? Because I, I mean, I know folks that could use that. Yes and no. Uh, and right now, White Downs Council is working on the, the it's the master plan for the cattle industry that to look at the next probably 30 to 50 years as far as where, where that's going to go. Slaughterhouse capacity in there and processing chill space, all that is a key component to that because obviously, uh, if you mentioned the uh, uh, marketing, if we have this production without marketing, it's kind of dumb. And so that's what the idea is there. Right now, the white cattle industry, uh, we produce on average about 60,000 calves a year. Big Island produces about 80% of that. Big Island has to be a net exporter uh, because our population base wouldn't support consumption of that much beef, period. Um, so it makes sense to have the majority of the slaughter capability on this island in this county 
But that being said, the cattle industry recognizes that we are a state industry, we're not an island industry. And so trying to figure out how to make this all work. And it may come down to where we have further processing. And this is an example. This isn't actually what's written down on paper. But say we have primary uh, slaughter capacity on this island, but we export, I don't know, the, the briskets to Maui where they are smoked and we make roast or uh, corned beef or something like that. that. The concept is to try and look at the whole industry inclusively. And a component of that is the slaughter capability, which is what you're talking about, the mobile slaughter. Uh, mobile or modular slaughter, those are two different deals. Mobile means you actually pick it up and move it to the next place. The problem with those is then you run into the, the problem of effluent coming out. What are you going to do with your waste products? Because you have to deal with that. And you have to have a place to hook up so you can get the waters coming in so you can process with that. So one of the problems with the mobile slaughter, though conceptually they do make sense, the actual application gets a little bit more difficult. And they're not these little things. They're actually pretty good sized trailers. So do you do that or do you have more modular systems that you put, that are permanently put someplace? In addition to that, where you're talking about the ones or two uh, uh, slaughter, somebody has two head or three head, that's all they want to take care of. Uh, getting them into the the line to get them to the processing plant. And that's a problem right now. And that's one thing we are facing with our industry. And how do we deal with that? The paradox is most of the production usually comes out of the ones and two head production models, not the, the larger ranches. And so the larger ranches definitely recognize the fact that the smaller ranches, we have to work out and figure out how that may happen. One of the concepts that has actually been worked on, and actually have a meeting with that next week, is this Hoy Catalyst Council general plan for going forward. One of the concepts that was thrown on the table was that if you produce a brand new state-of-the-art processing slaughterhouse plant that can do whatever we need to do, um, well, what do we do with something like Hamakua? Well, an idea came up, and um, and I think it was uh, Russell Copeland's idea, uh, but that would be converted to a more custom kill facility where the ones or twos or threes so they can always get into that and have access to the slaughterhouse. And to me that makes all the sense in the world because that would, would solve a lot of issues for our, our industries um, all the way around. Further, if they have the, the processing capacity there, they may be doing more processing, whether it be grinding hamburger or, or making sausage or something like that. So I think there's a whole bunch of stuff that we need to talk about and put on the table coming forward. And this is actually a pretty exciting time because I think we have the drive and the initiative to get a bunch of this stuff done now. And so when you're asking about people needing access, I think you're either talking modular or mobile. And they are different but sort of similar. But that may not suffice for this island. That may actually suffice for, I don't know, um, the Maya, if that's where you need to go with that. Maui may need to look at a modular system. Molokai has a new federal plant that's a pretty good plant, but they, you know, they have a capacity that was put in for the TV thing. And Kauai, they need to look at a modular system or something like that. It's so actually a modular system going into uh, Robinson. Oh, is he putting one in? Robinson's put in. There are, there are two existing slaughterhouses on Kauai, and there, Robinson's put their own modular in some of the buildings they had at, old, at the, the former plantations. They got a lot of room, right? Right. So, they apparently are building a modular system to be the third, but they have enough of their own throughput to be able to justify that operation. Yeah, yeah I wasn't thinking just the catalyst thing with livestock. There's a lot of sheep and right. goat uh, uh, ranchers now that are you know doing the small scale farming. This animals help me out with whatever other farming right. I'm doing. They really have limited slaughtering capacity that, that they can sell in the market. Well, it's kind of uh, here have some meat, for my friend. You know. But, and that's why if they're going to have it slaughtered, it has to be inspected. Right. And so that's where we run into the thing. You can't just do a, you know, right. got me tree kill. You know, you, have to have a, you have to have a permanent inspector assigned to that slaughterhouse. Right. But is the economics justified? <clears throat> if you look at an individual situation, that's where it gets tough. If you look at it from an industry standpoint, that's where it makes more sense. And so that's why this is what actually the general plan is. And the general plan for the cattlemen is to look at this whole structure. Right now, statewide, if we slaughter 9,000 head total, um, I think that's a probably good number, Jeff. Actually, you, you wrote the, um, the thing, but I think that's a probably pretty good number, including everything. If we're exporting 50,000 head of calves a year, even if we hold back 25%, we have to double kill capacity, and we're not ready for that yet. So that's why this, I 
general plan is, is being discussed right now. Does that answer that? Sort of, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> with us, with Ed Olson Trust, I'm looking at this agricultural program. Uh, we have all these ag lands that uh, Ed Olson owns, and we have financial ability, and pretty much all these categories in this program, more than half of them are were affected by. So I'm looking at you know, where, how can we take the lead in some of these situations here to learn uh, initially, but uh, we, we can really uh, do a lot with, with what the Edmund C. Olson Trust has to offer. And I think that, that's what I'm looking so, into so, with being on the board. So the trust, trust has land and they have financing is what you're saying? They do. And they have, they have and a lot of these programs. projects that are on the, on the program we're already incorporated in, more than half of them, and uh, it's, it's a pretty, uh, in-depth list and it just it shows me how much we're really involved with, with all what's going on so here to learn and to, to input what I can. And what kind of outreach I guess would be two outreaches either tracking you know people into your group or else um, seeing what the you know what's county level support would help your group go forward. So. True. Education. Uh, we're definitely into uh, whatever we can do to encourage community support and ag. Uh, Education of young people, uh, getting schools involved, the 4-H, um, just an unlimited amount of, of possibilities that, that we have to, to push forward and take the lead on. So in a sense, that would be kind of uh, creating more networking, so let more people know about what you're doing. Absolutely. One of the things that the county can do through your website, possibly, I'm just speculating that. Yeah. The problem with farmers that I see is that we don't we don't go to websites. You know, we're, we're, by the time the day is done, we're, we're toast, you know, we're, we're laying down or, or we're just trying to revitalize ourselves and, and uh, most of us don't go to a lot of meetings and we don't do, we don't take advantage of all of the educational possibilities that are out there. So how do we get farmers in and how do we get young people involved? That's, that's one of the things I walk around and think about a lot, uh, almost every day. Okay, that's definitely something you're going to explore. Can I ask just a quick question? You guys have a, um, a fair amount of mat nut husks in the Kudu area. And they, actually, all of the mat nut husks from Kauai are delivered to the farm in Hilo. So our potential to do the mm -hmm. composting, to do the, the microbiology and stuff and breaking that down into fertilizer is, is totally unlimited. Um, we have the husk in Kau as well, but mostly all of it is trucked back to Hilo. So we have the majority of the pile right now. Really? Yeah. Where is it? I find it. Okay, fine. All right. Cool. But that, 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 you know, if you, if you pull up a little bit of the county level, it looks like uh, somewhere, not necessarily from the den, that was just kind of in, in discussion, it's really looking nutrient recycling, you know, on my, you have waste coming out of the rendering plants, we got macmax over here, we got fish, you know. Mm -hmm. I know that one third of what we put in the landfill is, is uh, you know, plant waste. That that's, that's could be another area. So the legislature opens January 15th, that's the opening day. All the bills that were uh, not, uh, there, there are bills that are still alive from last session because it carries over in a biennium. So the bills that are still pending from last session can be brought up for a hearing if the chair of the respective committee chooses to. Uh, there can be new bills that will be introduced, and so uh, that might include bills that are priority to the county. Uh, there could be capital improvement project funding that could be introduced, even though this is the second year. Uh, and there's very limited CIP funding available, that is another possibility. So what I'll do is uh, track those pieces of legislation, and depending on our timing for our next meeting, I'll send that update uh, as soon as I've got a body of, you know, basically as soon as the legislature starts. The deadline for introducing bills is usually just a couple days after the legislature starts. Usually it's that Friday. As soon as the legislative timetable comes out, 
I'll prepare a status report, send it to staff, and then that can be circulated to the commission. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking about what we have done at our last session, trying to get some of the commodity groups to at least give a, a brief presentation. Uh, we had the pollinators do that one time, right? Just, just to, from an from industry perspective, at least get some type of input from them. Floral industry would be a good one too. And we did Topaya and Seattle. Yeah. Right. And what was it? Criminal property protection or something? Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. So just continue that yeah. and uh, thank the speaker for it. Yeah. Right. Can I increase the meeting input? I do have some today. Do you have? I don't know what I'm allowed to bring up, but uh, a couple of things. One is um, our industry, Hawaii Floor Culture Nursery Association, was just um, successfully informing with the uh, SHAC, Synergistic Hawaii Agriculture Council. What this group is basically primarily about is uh, to go after um, USDA foreign ag service money. So one of the things we did this year was, uh, we, I just returned from Canada, we just went to Toronto and Vancouver to research, and we found that um, there's good opportunity for Hawaii, Hawaii Expo up there. We went based, based on flowers, blooming plants and foliage plants, but I'm sure that there's other opportunities there. Uh, so just um, kind of a tickler, um, the shack group is experimental, so to speak. Um, it's the papaya, HPIA, uh, H, uh, HCA, Hawaii Coffee Association, and EFTA that came together to try and uh, bring in foreign dollars, yeah. well, I should say foreign ex service dollars. Um, so that's what we're exper experimenting with. Uh, and why is because if we're not export-oriented in our crop, uh, or in our production, we cannot be um, also strong at home. There's a balance in our production where we have to be volume oriented, uh, not necessarily monocrop, but, but in a diverse way, many different types of flowers and plants we grow. But in order for us to uh, be successful and encourage more farmers to come into this game, the nursery men and women, is we got we got to be export oriented or our industry if it only ships within the state, we, we kill each other. We press each other out of business. Because in, in, in our business, if the more we produce, if we only sell it in the state, price goes down. It, it becomes a commoditized product. If we continue to find new market and export, then we can we can create and maintain grades and standards within the state. And we still stay profitable. So that, that seems like that would be good information to get out to how the growers and people think about growing can also that this is basically some this experimental marketing opportunities developing across how, how across, across different crops. So it's, it's kind of like diversified crop marketing as opposed to single crop marketing. Yeah. That would definitely be good thing to uh, and also be able to back out with, uh, with a So maybe the next time maybe our turn comes up we can go a little bit more into um, detail on what we're doing, share with the group. Yeah, the other thing, if I may, maybe sure. just a couple more minutes, but is the way our industry, uh, we feel, can grow better, control, manage growth, is we really in support of uh, the Department of Ag State Biosecurity Program. And we feel the biosecurity program is probably the most comprehensive program the Department of Ag has. And it should be the, it's almost a, a comprehensively a mission of the Department of Ag, because it, in, it includes import, export, it includes um, the inspection programs, it includes invasive, everything that comes under from um, the breeding program uh, to diversify your crops, to the packaging, marketing, promotion, the export, the buy local, it, it, it encumbers, includes all of that. The concern that we have in our sector is that uh, our biosecurity program is not functioning right now. So what, it, what I also would like to uh, discuss with the commission is how we can uh, uh, advise and uh, request our mayor to uh, be able to articulate this to the department is that for our industry to grow, for the county of Hawaii to become more successful, we need an active and uh, implementing and functioning biosecurity program. Okay, that's unfortunate. Good thing to get out of that next agenda. Uh, so, 
don't have any more to add. The only thing I might um, get back to what question Mike had. Um, after I have this meeting next week, there's a, uh, a presentation that I've done that touches on the more uh, comprehensive look at the cattle industry in the future, and it's got about a 20 minute presentation. If the commission would like, I can give that to the commission so you guys know what we're working on. It's basically a lot of slides and pictures, and, um, and that just kind of again round out what, what that industry is looking at. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll go around and make up our agenda. All the stuff we just discussed and come there. Um, one thing I'd like to update everyone on is um, where I'm at and with the microloan programs. Uh, we did two things. We worked with, uh, as a company, as an individual, and just as my own company, we worked with uh, Feed the Hunger Foundation to get approved to have $25,000 and $5,000 uh, grants. I'm not grants, but loans. And their percentage is 8.8%. And what our company did was say, we'll give it to our growers at 5.5, and we just paid the upfront cost, which is about, it's under $200. And so to our growers, they could get it at 5.5, uh, because I figured that was a working, working idea. We had one grower that we were able to work with on that. We still could disperse four more of those. But as I started working with the different, different growers, there's lots of different situations that came up that made, made it difficult. So that still exists, but then I went and worked with another group called Kiva Zip, and that was for my own farm, and they're a very interesting program. What, we, what they do is it's 0% interest, and it's raised from people around the world. So the basic structure is you get a trustee, so I got a person who vouched for me, and then I make my proposal. You put your proposal out, your first level, you're allowed 2,500. You do that, okay, and it's 5,000. You do that, okay, it's 15. It grows to about 20 is the max. The way it's governed is having just gone through the process is they look at your tax stuff, they look at your credit rating, they look at all that kind of stuff. Your trustee says, I vouch for you, they vouch you, then they put you on the internet, then anyone who wants to donate can donate. Uh, and it's not donating, it's a loan, so they actually get their money back. And so we went through that process, we got listed, and Four days, we raised an entire $2,500, zero percent interest. We had uh, people supporting us from all around the world, completely, like from China, from uh, from Europe, from Europe, from Australia. And what I'd like to do is localize that. See if we can't work with Kiva and do that on an hour basis and start self-financing ourselves through this through this system. So. Um, I'd like to, you know, I'm trying to get them done. I'd like to work it out where you know, if the county was able to put some money towards it, it'd just be two criteria which they need to do. Uh, one, they don't loan to more than 10% of the loan, because as long as you don't provide the whole loan, then everyone else, the crowdsource, decides whether it's a good loan or not. And some loans are up there for months and no one finds them. And some get funded like right away. And, um, and the other thing that would be on the big island, and for the county perspective, if they put out thirty thousand dollars at that rate, they pull in three hundred thousand dollars to the to the uh, county. They get the thirty thousand dollars back. It's an eighty-five percent payback rate right now. That's how many people are reporting. So they could say you'd like to get eighty-five percent of eighty-five percent of your money back if you just use the numbers you have. So that's uh, that seemed better than the other program I was working with, and I'm basically explaining that. So that's that's where I'm at with my balloons, and I would like to put that on agenda later. What's the, um, the payback criteria at like that time frame? Uh, you make it up yourself. I made it up two years. My intention is to pay it back in six months. We put up a greenhouse roof. It's, it's pretty Facebook. You know, we have pictures of ourselves up in the roof. We have, you know, pe people doing it. We got a very interesting response from around from around the um, from around the globe. There's organizations that have formed specific interests. You know, agriculture is a little bit new to them. Mostly they're helping people like start little businesses in cities, they're a little bit more urban based, but they're open to the to doing agriculture. So if it's if you look up on the internet Kona Zip Ten, then you'll um, you'll see by the way what it did. And what was the default rate and the interest rate? The interest rate is zero. What was the default rate on your what the default rate across the United States I think is around well the payback rate is 85%, so I guess the default is like 15%. The other place they work is Kenya, and they're working in other parts of the world too. I think 
think Kenya is actually getting at less default than America, because America tries out more things. <laughs> Just question, uh, you know, if you made your interest rates so that you covered your default losses, then it would pretty much be a break even for your investors, especially if the interest rates were lower than you could normally get out of a bank. Well, I think the structure is different. This is a person that's peer to peer. So you look at someone's idea, and you're the loan officer. You decide whether you're going to make the loan. The loans are from $5 to $100, whatever you want. You know, you make up the, make up the number. And really, you look at the whole thing. Like, if it's a iffy kind of proposal someone has, basically, it doesn't get funded. You know, if it doesn't, it's, it's all or nothing. You either, like, if you shoot twice, if I sat there and said, okay, I'm going to do $10,000 for a project that's not anywhere near worth it, then uh, it doesn't get funded. And you can get 9500 but if you can get 10000 it's it's all or nothing. You, get, you know, if you, it's not good enough to get funded, it doesn't get funded. So that's the, that's the protection on it. Okay. Um, so I guess... We can actually follow up with <coughs> all the things we just discussed and see what we want to put on our next agenda. So, um, I guess, do we have anything that's, that's continuing? Not particularly in this one. Okay, so. I'll yes. give a report from the Legislative Committee. Okay. I'll try to get your building there. Okay. Building, possible. Uh, so, other things that people want to put on the agenda? Did you have? Uh, Troy, did you have anything you want to put on the agenda for? Um, I didn't really have anything specific there in what I put on the table, but. Okay. Yes. Um, if, if you'd like to, I could try to spearhead to try to get a, how do you say, a guest speaker for, for industry update of a particular industry. I haven't decided about industry yet, but. I'd say if we, if we, I think we should either get the building department person or our guest speaker, but probably, probably not both in the same way. Right. Same okay. so, I think our building department is our guest speaker. So. Yeah, yeah, that would be a guest speaker this time. Um, if you want to do I, I get the, the, get the commission out of that, I think I'll have something um, after this meeting next week that I can update it, so it'll be actually very timely because it's supposed to go for the legislature. Okay. Uh, just to, for discussion, a couple of things. One, a choice comments about having land and having assets and maybe nobody to take advantage of them. And I know there's a lot of land out there and, and a lot of people that think they would like to become farmers or are farmers and don't have access to land. We've, have we ever thought about what keeps that from happening? Why we, you know, why you can't put people on your land easily? Uh, there are too many regulations, too much liability, you know, are there hoops or that we have to jump through that maybe we can make some, make bigger so they're easier to jump through? <laughs> so that, that could kind of tie together, I mean, probably some meaning input. I mean, if we put, I, mean, I don't know quite to call it, we call it land and assets, or else maybe call, call it community. <coughs> mix, mix it up there, maybe we can put that in, leave that for some discussion. You know, we don't have, it'd be kind of an open-ended discussion. Well, because we have folks that are doing that. I mean, we, you know, Command A obviously does that a lot. And, and uh, uh, it'd be nice to hear, um, do you exclude anybody because they don't meet certain criteria or anybody can come in? But obviously there has to be a risk factor in that. And it'd be interesting to know what that risk factor is because some of us might be willing to take more risk. So, so maybe if, um, if you and Troy might want to just you know, work on something, yeah, we live across the street and go out a couple beers. Yeah. <laughs> just to put it, you know, because it's not really a proposal level. That's off the record, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, then, and then, you know, we're, we're kind of dodging uh, a big one, I think, which is the recent legislation uh, and how that may affect uh, the direction. Yeah, yeah, GMO. You know, and, and, and I, I picked up on Jeff's comments about organic metrics. I think. The, the concept of do we have those and if we don't, do we need to bolster them in some way so we understand um, uh, how we can uh, uh, implement this new direction or, or, or not this new direction but this new emphasis perhaps? Or maybe, maybe wrap that up with, with land assets and new development kind of so, stick that together then because I guess in a sense it's community, it's community development, it's community involvement. It's coming both there. We're gathering the information in as a committee. We need certain information needs to go out to more people. We need to streamline that. All those things could be um, kind of headlined under that, under that 
under that discussion? Because when I when I think of organics, I think of uh, 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 micro brewery. You know, you can go out and buy a six pack of Bud pretty cheap, and it's mass produced, and it, it's all about quantity. <clears throat> but if you really want a, a, a different kind of thing, and, and I'm not suggesting that non-organic farm crops are less quality, but you're have to pay more, I would assume. But if we don't maybe have the metrics to to base that on, but it's my assumption. But some people are willing to pay more for that that microbrewery of, of the papaya or whatever. So understanding that is is I think would be helpful for us to help make decisions and recommendations on how a county can begin to influence the industry on this place and how to help everybody as farmers too make make decisions. So Mike, is your goal to have a set of metrics developed or I don't know. I mean, it's just a whole new thing for me personally. It's a big conversation, and yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree. We should group things and put them under one headline because that's how I think we end up feeling not super productive when we talk about too many things at once, like we've done on previous go-rounds with the commission. So that would just be my only comment: is that okay. to make a separate agenda. Yeah, instead of trying to lump too many things together, and then the conversation goes in a bunch of different ways. And we leave feeling like we didn't really accomplish. Okay, well, if we put, if we put organic um, metrics on on agenda, then I actually could probably work on addressing that because I think you have questions that probably have some answers on it. So I could. And my goal would be to kind of bring the egg community um, back together again a little bit because there have been some confusion or some you know disagreements or whatever and. And you, you know, I just read the letter to the editor about some of this stuff, and it's like separation versus joining. And I think part of this commission's meeting is to have us all be working together, just understanding why some people want to work this way and some people want to work that way. Okay. Uh, I'd like to add um, microphones to do it. And basically, what I would intend to do is create either, uh, you know, I check check if the mayor is interested, but. Uh, just create a simple proposal, another proposal round, and, and, and see if it makes sense. I have a suggestion maybe for um, drafting agendas. I would suggest maybe we don't pick more than three topics per meeting to discuss. Even three is a bit of a stretch given just the regular order of business we have to go through in order to get to a topic. Um, so I think you have a good list going, but I don't know if we want to pick them first two or three for next month instead of trying to put them all on the agenda. Just a suggestion, Chair. Okay. I think, I think we can... <laughs> <laughs> well, we only have two, and a, two to two and a half hours. Yeah, okay. I think... Well, I think the focus of the next one will be around the building person, but I think the other ones we can, I guess, prioritize the tempo, and then we're going to put a time for one. Time I, I would suggest, I mean, some topics seem like they would be good to discuss maybe the same time. Like, I really was interested in your Toga program. I looked it up while you were talking. But, you know, that could feel like something like Troy looking at next generation of um, farmers or getting younger people interested. I mean, it's really a startup way. I mean, existing farmers can use it too to, to start new innovations in their operation. But some things could have similar tracks and be discussed together and achieve all at the same time. Okay. Uh, yes, any other comments on creating the agenda? Anyone that want to like add a chat? I agree with her. Due to the fact that if, if we have more than three, then we, we get bottled down and, and in the end we seem like we don't accomplish anything. So I think if we stay pointed and focused and even if it's only one item on the agenda and we're successful, Right. It, it, and move on to the next one. It's better than us spinning, spinning our wheel, right? At, at this particular point in time. So, I, and I know it's difficult to prioritize, but you know, I think prioritizing is more important, right, than having so much uh, agenda items and accomplish nothing. I'd rather accomplish one. Okay. Um, I guess from what I see right now, we have on the agenda for next time the legislative committee. The building department person. Um, we're looking possibly at the um, land community development discussion, 
reaction to the GMO legislation, you know, just because we don't know which way it's going to go right now, are um, organic metrics and microloans. So, um, yes, it would be. I'd like to make one suggestion. Since David said this session is opening January 15th, I don't know if we're meeting in December or not yet. We haven't right. discussed that. But David mentioned there's a bunch of rules that could carry over. I don't know if you could just do a quick summary for us. Maybe we don't have to spend a lot of time, but I'd like to see something short on the agenda just yes. to brief us on what from Ag might carry over. Yes, if, if we meet before session starts, I'll mm -hmm. provide that as my update. Okay. Um, I, I just a thought, you know, you might use some of these updates, which I think, you know, the, the cattle industry is doing a general plan, and I think that's what Tim's talking about doing, some really interesting stuff coming out of the floor of the industry, that you might use those as kind of end of the meeting presentations over, <coughs> over you know, sandwich, and then you just have this conversation. It's not, it's not like you're trying to act on them, but you're just kind of feeling yourself, you know, and you're just being informative to each other. So it, it might be a way to back end that conversation, and then it's, you know, if you're going to have a sandwich at the end of this, then, you know, just another way to have a conversation. So, as opposed to being a really working topic, it's a kind of an informational topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you put that cattle for the lunch. <laughs> sure. <laughs> lunch, lunch break. Okay. Uh, I like the idea of staying on the, on the, yeah, the building sure. issues and the yeah. housing issues. So that we should... Um, as a priority, that was something that was left over, and I think we should shouldn't let that one drop. Sorry, the the priority would be a build, having a building inspector come and tell us. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> we drop the, the community discussion more an ambiguous one that we dropped out for this agenda. But, but think about things that we can probably put on the agenda for next time. You know, maybe get more specific on it. So, I, I, I'm like, no. Marissa, um, I, I'm really interested in that your, your program, that micro mm -hmm. program, and I, and I think it's very, very, how you say, uh, informative for even all, all of us actually that have other associates that we may be able to help with. Mm -hmm. So, if anything, I'd like to see that. Okay, so I'll put that. That will be a short presentation, actually, because I can handle questions pretty easily on it. And since I'm, since I'm in the process of going through it, Okay, my first payment. <laughs> okay, so we, so then, uh, oh, and then I think we should have we should be prepared to react to the GMO legislation. Uh, you know, we don't know which way it's going to go, but I think we should be prepared to, to react. You don't have to have the same, you know, divisions all argued out. Just say this is what reaction is. We're, we're cross section. Okay, so I guess that gives us legislative building, um, react to the GMO, uh, micro loan. And cattle for lunch. Cattle for lunch. Ooh. And that will be our lunch. <laughs> like <Good> harvest. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so that, is that, um, is that agenda everyone approves it? Do you need to approve the agenda? Okay. Yeah, and actually, the U.S. Chair has uh, authority to set the agenda. Right. We're just giving you input. Okay, well. And requesting that these things be done. Okay, well, that's what we'll put on, that's what we'll put on the agenda. And... Thanks. Yeah, uh, just as a matter of course, um, we can, uh, you can approve the agenda closer to the meeting, when you set the meeting date. Mm -hmm. we, we can, I'll things may change, some of these things are motion, in motion, right? So um, we, we will communicate with you on that agenda and um, can you, can, you can tweak it is what the point is. So okay. you don't have to decide right now, but you've got a good feel for what's in everybody's head. Okay, and then I guess the determining date and time and place, I guess the first dis level of discussion is are we going to be monthly or bi monthly? Is, is that part of the discussion last time? Is there, is there consensus on that? There, we touched on it, and um, we probably should start out meeting monthly uh, like we discussed previously. Um, again, that's the will of the chair um, to get going at least because we've got some stuff to kind of get our feet in. And if we find, especially in the legislative season, um, the mayor's probably going to want some input. So, so, we should, so then we should probably have a meeting in December then. Okay, probably that starts. We have to try and do it early enough. I guess it's already late November. And after December 15th, I kind of think it's not worth the time we're trying to do it. Is, is, is December too early for a meeting? Is, what's... It maybe might be too early to get someone from building Jeff to come in December. Oh, I couldn't. 
I'll leave the meeting and go ask the question instead of David. Um, you know, I think part of the challenge is, um, you know, if in the scheduling process is chasing dates. Mm -hmm. And if there were a fixed date, what is this, the right. fourth so uh, we do the fourth the Tuesday, which is kind of right, if we did this next month, it's in the middle of the Christmas, New Year's week, which I'm not sure how many people you're going to get to participate, but maybe. Um, December is always an exception month, and maybe we can do something sooner. But um, I know it would be easier for Dot mm -hmm. if we kind of said, okay, here's the date, and we'll try to clear our date and keep that date going forward. So December being its own anomaly, and you can talk about that, but the sooner we can get a sta stable date, the easier it's going to be for Dot to have to do what she has to do. And I think we tried not to do Mondays last time because of holidays and even Fridays for that reason people travel. Um, so it seems, it seems like Tuesday's been a pretty, pretty good working day for, for everybody in that. Uh, I think you're on second Tuesday for most of the last time. Yeah, yeah, that's going to work pretty well because you, have, you don't feel like it's at the end of the month and you missed all the <laughs> <laughs> So, Doc, do you know, does um, do the department head still travel to Kona on Tuesdays or? Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess if the mayor is going to come once a quarter, I guess you can give them enough advance notice that we could plan. If it's a Tuesday, maybe that would be the Tuesday. We so for a Tuesday, so he's going to come every Tuesday? Yes. Okay, well, that makes Tuesdays, no, corner Tuesday sounds like that would be the best time to aim for mayor and other heads too then. In the event we need to meet with him, we could probably go out there. Okay. And then as far as the location, uh, we're looking at moving. Uh, back and forth between Hilo and Coma. Does that seem to make sense for everyone's driving and yeah. reach both sides of the island? Because it sure. seems like being in the county offices on both sides is a plus, as opposed to being in some of the more obscure places. Okay, so I think we'll take. Um, did you want to utilize the um, Polycom, the video conferencing, or would you like to have the sit down where everyone's here at the table getting, or, or do you? I, I like everybody being in the same room. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done that polycom, and it's like something always seems to go wrong, and you don't have the same interaction. I think if everybody's comfortable with it. Okay, so okay. We'll, be, we'll be in person. That sounds sounds good to me. And would you be working with a specific Tuesday, first, second, third, fourth week? Um, I think we're looking at, at second, 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 week. second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Okay, thank okay. you. So, the, so really, the question then, as we narrow this down, is okay. whether but when, if the second Tuesday in December makes sense to me, it should be about two, two, it's two weeks from now. It's the 10th. Uh, that's I need, sure um, we've got to post the agenda on the 7th. Six days uh, prior to the meeting is the agenda is due. So um, if that's two weeks away, then we've got to iron out that. We've got to iron out So the December, you want to have just slightly different and then go you back to the second week starting in January? What is that third? What is the third? 17th. 17th is the third. 24th is the fourth right before Christmas. That's right. Yeah. 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 The third Tuesday. For December so only. Just for December. December only. Okay. And then, and then we go and back then to the second Tuesday. And then the 14th of January. January. Oh, I'm going to miss that one, but that's fine. Okay, so then we're looking at, that's the 17th is the third Tuesday. So we're looking at December 17th at 10 o'clock in Kona. The next meeting? No, it also um, de depends on the availability of the location. So, uh, in the event, the, there should be, Kona and West Hawaii is a large area that they should be able to find a, a, a location. But in the event, there's parties, there's no, I'm joking. There's, uh, you know, the rooms are not available. We may have to come back. To a location on the Eagle side. Okay. Because then when they have the upstairs, we've got they upstairs. have lots of places. Yeah, they have places. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? We'll, okay, so is that. Um, and we'll do this, let's have a calendar prepared for the next year. Uh, Beginning yeah. with 12 17 and the January 14th. Okay, January, January 14th. And then I think what we can do is, depending on what, you know, certain times we get people on there, but get them in the summer, certain times we know there's not enough we can. We can, we can move it around, but we have a tentative schedule. Okay, I think that takes care of the next meeting. And so we're doing January 14 as a January meeting. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, shucks, but you're, you're... No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we pick those next two months that we're going to do it. The legislation session starts on the 15th.
Oh, okay, so speak up. Speak up. I actually have a standing second Tuesday meeting from 9 to 12 every month, but, and I, I'm not the head of that meeting, I can't change that. Um, so I, like, you would be third? missing all your... Chip, what about the third? It's all of them. Third. Third. How about Tuesday if we just second. go for the third? Tuesday, then. <laughs> Good thing we figured that one out I'm, I'm trying to get back in the. So that would be, that would be January 21st. Okay. So January 21st then. Yeah. And December puts us right in lock. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does that affect, does the January meeting doesn't affect your your uh, legislative? Uh, okay. That's, 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 that's fine. Then I'll, I'll be able to give you an update on all the bills that are have been introduced. I'll prepare that right. I, it's usually the end of that first week, so I should have an update that's very current. Okay. So I guess we need a motion to adjourn. So okay. Okay. Uh, second. I'll take all in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> all right. Thank you. There's sandwiches for the commission and uh, chips. Please avail yourself.